Does this display look familiar? As the NAVMAN 3100 instruments get older, some of the display segments fail to display. The most probable cause of this problem is a ribbon connector which transmits signals from the main printed circuit board to the LCD display. This video has been prepared to walk you through the replacement of the suspect connector with a new flexible zebra connector from Fuji Poly. To begin with, you remove the back of the depth sounder and it is held in place with Torx head screws number 8 and it really makes life a lot easier to have the proper Torx screwdriver. I've removed all the screws except this last one. They come out quite readily with the proper tool. With all the screws out and set aside, the front cover just comes off of the depth sounder. It has a plastic screen to it and buttons for activating the different functions. Set that aside. Now the basic LCD is the glass piece here. It is held on by a plastic frame and the easiest way to go about this is to loosen the plastic frame from the printed circuit board down here. There are two plastic clips, one on either side. I recommend loosening the one on the right side where my finger is and I will show you how to do that. With a small screwdriver or a table knife actually works pretty well. You go into this space where the plastic clip goes into the printed circuit board and you press in to deflect it and then work it up until it releases. It's a bit difficult as there are some small plastic tabs here that engage in the printed circuit board. But once this side is loose you can move it over just a little. The other side disengages and then the circuit board and the LCD pieces are separate. The next step is to gently remove the plastic support from the LCD itself. These two black plastic straps hook on either side of the LCD. If you just take a fingernail and get under the end of it, it pops loose. You can see there's a, maybe you can see a little tab here that just engages on a ledge on the LCD itself. So with those out of the way, the plastic backing comes loose and you have the LCD. Now the connector that I had spoken of is this ribbon cable here that goes between the LCD and these gold contacts on the printed circuit board. This one appears to be in fairly good shape although I was having quite some difficulty with it on the boat. So we'll be removing the ribbon cable, cleaning up, and we'll also be trimming the plastic piece to accommodate the new connector. Now that we have the offending ribbon cable exposed, I will gently pull it loose from the gold connectors on the printed circuit board. I'll try to let you see as I do this, just gently pulling. There will be some adhesive that remains on the gold connectors and we'll be cleaning that off in just a little bit with acetone. So there it is free. And there is the connector itself. And then, in a similar manner, we will very gently pull it loose from the LCD. It doesn't take a lot of force. It just gently comes loose. And there it's free, with a considerable amount of adhesive still remaining. So we will clean that up next with some acetone. This next step involves cleaning the contacts on the printed circuit board with acetone. Just 
got a little container here, a Q-tip. It takes a bit of scrubbing, but if you can watch here, you can see how it cleans up. Probably got this one a little too wet, but still. You get quite a bit of debris on the Q-tip, which is the adhesive itself. So you just gently rub all the way across, cleaning up that residual adhesive that's on the gold contacts. And yeah, we got about half of it done. And we'll continue on. So now here we have the printed circuit board all cleaned up, all the adhesive is removed, and we use the same process on the LCD itself. Very gently rubbing and up it easy if you can see it coming off in the Q-tip. We'll do that all the way across. And you want to be sure you get all the adhesive off, go off over it several times with a clean Q-tip and make sure there's nothing remaining, otherwise that's going to be a resistance to uh, making a good contact to the uh, circuit board. When you completed cleaning the LCD, do not have heart failure because it's going to appear that there's nothing left on the glass. If you get the lay on it just right, you'll be able to see the very faint contacts um, are still in the glass, even though everything looks perfectly clean. I made two marks to show the extreme extent of the contact so that when we place the new polymer connector in there we will know where to to place it. So here we're cleaned up and ready to begin the reassembly process. In order to provide a good landing surface for the new connector we need to trim some of the plastic from the holder for the LCD. I would say from about a half inch on either side of the marks there's a area of plastic that needs to be removed. There's a slight bevel on this corner and what you want to do is remove enough plastic so that there's no bevel remaining. I'll be doing this on a small belt sander and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Now if you look carefully at our LCD plastic assembly from the reverse side you can see where I have removed about an eighth of an inch of material at the top of the plastic piece. Now we will begin the reassembly and I'm going to reassemble the LCD and plastic support to the printed circuit board and then I will install the connector itself once those two are in place. There's a piece of light white cardboard stock on the back side of the plastic support and you will also want to trim about a millimeter or a sixteenth of an inch off of that. So we begin our reassembly with the plastic clips. Hook one down on one side and snap the other one in place. And then the second one, similar fashion. And now we'll take our entire assembly and reattach it to the printed circuit board. You take the uh, side, I'm pointing here, you can tell there's a little notch in the plastic tab that goes into the printed circuit board. Put that one in first. And uh, the tricky part of this whole process is getting these little alignment pins down into the printed circuit board. It's a bit difficult but if you fool with it you can get it to work out. And on this remaining side you want to push in that plastic tab with your screwdriver again so that you can get it to go down into the slot in the board and then you have to work this corner. Here it clicked. So now we have it all in place and the next step will be to install the connector here in this void area. Here is our new connector. It's made by Fuji Poly Corporation and is available through Indigo Electronics. 
you can find us on the web at www.atomic4.com. The connector is very flexible as you can see and the black area here in between the two silicon side pieces is where the conductors are that carry the signals from the printed circuit board to the LCD. Now what we'll do is roughly align it with the marks that we had made for where the original connector was and it's best to kind of start one end underneath and then progress down and wiggle and work it up underneath there. It takes a little bit of doing but you can get a get a feel for it and once you get things going or a little bit misaligned you can slide it down some you do not have to be perfectly centered left and right um, just as long as it's in the area where the original marks were so that you are making a conductive path from the right points on the circuit board to the LCD. And you may want to just move it back a little bit to square it up pretty good. And then uh, there you have it. That's the new connector. And we will go ahead and reassemble the entire device now and then carry it to our workbench and fire it up and see how good it is. With the instrument fully assembled, I will now apply power and watch it come to life. This depth sounder is set to the simulate mode to allow you to observe all of the digits. I think it is safe to say from what we're seeing here that we have a successful repair. For more information, visit Indigo Electronics at www.atomic4.com. Thanks and have a great day.